All right, we are fresh off of the huge announcement from AMD yesterday where they talked about three brand new graphics cards that are going to absolutely turn the PC gaming world upside down. NVIDIA has been on top for so long and AMD has been kind of content to play in the middle ground. Now, maybe not so much. They're taking direct aim at the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090. But maybe the most important product that they announced yesterday was their lowest end SKU, the RX 6800, which will compete against this card the RTX 3070. Now, while we don't have specifics on the performance of the Radeon RX 6800, we do have specifics on the performance of these cards. The RTX 3070s actually launched two days ago, I guess, but you could only buy them today. And coincidentally, today is also the day when we could talk about these partner model cards. One thing we do know about the RTX 3070 is the price. This Zotac Twin Edge version is gonna come in at $500 US, whereas the 6800 has an MSRP of 580, and partner model cards are going to likely be more than that. So for now, let's take a look at the RTX 3070, see how this partner model actually performs in comparison to a known quantity, the RTX 3080, give some overclocking love to this card, and then maybe we'll have a better idea of exactly what we can expect when AMD launches their new cards next month. The new Dark Power Pro 12 is everything you never knew you always needed in a power supply. Be Quiet has gone the extra mile here with a new frameless fan design for silent operation, six independent 12 volt rails, and a robust 10 year warranty. With full digital regulation for maximum stability and efficiency, it achieves the rare 80 plus titanium rating, and it does it all while having a beautiful industrial design and individually sleeved cables. Check out the link below or head to BeQuiet.com to learn more. Let's just start by quickly running through some basic specs of the RTX 3070. This applies to all models, regardless if they come from NVIDIA and the Founders Edition, or like this one, this is from Zotac, this is their Twin Edge. Now all RTX 3070s are gonna have 5,888 CUDA cores, eight gigs of GDDR6 memory on a 256-bit bus. They have second generation RT cores, third generation Tensor cores, and are based on NVIDIA's Ampere architecture and manufactured using the Samsung 8 nanometer node. Now, what's really gonna differentiate the RTX 3070s, be it from NVIDIA and the FE cards or the cards from Asus, Gigabyte, EVGA or Zotac is gonna be the cooling solution, the form factor and the boost clock. Now the boost clock on the twin edge version is essentially the same as you'll find on the Founders Edition at 1725 megahertz. The thing that does set it apart is the form factor. This is the absolute smallest Ampere graphics card that I have yet seen. It is less than two slots thick and it is only about 22 centimeters long. The one thing that I would definitely encourage encourage small form factor enthusiasts to look out for, however, is although this will likely fit in many small form factor cases lengthwise, widthwise, it is a little bit taller than your standard card. It's definitely taller than the FE, and it's also taller than things like the EVGA XC3 Ultra. Another thing that you're probably going to have to look out for, and is a little bit unusual about this card, is actually the positioning of the PCIe power connectors. Now, you don't have to worry about messing around with NVIDIA's proprietary proprietary 12 pin connector for now with the partner model cards. However, Zotac has positioned the two power connectors on this card to be not at the end. They're not only are they inset from the end several inches, but they're also inset from the edge of the card by about an inch. Now, when I installed it in my case, it wasn't really an issue. However, you will have to definitely take this into account when you're running your cables. The only lighting effects present here are on the Zotac gaming logo on the lead edge of the card. So if you have a vertical mount, unfortunately, there is no lighting that's going to be present that you're going to be able to see. However, I know that there are a lot of people that don't really care if there's lighting on their card or not. And also, especially if this is going to be going in a small form factor build, a lot of times those cases don't even have windows to begin with. Now, as far as testing goes, what I actually did was run several benchmarks 
at stock settings. Then I applied a manual overclock, ran some benchmarks that way, and then we compared it to my RTX 3080. Keep in mind though that this testing was not done on the fastest gaming CPU on the market. It was actually done in my editing system, which uses a 3970X 32 core Threadripper chip. Now, of course, you're not going to get huge fluctuations in frame rates. However, if you use something like a 10900K or even one of the new AMD 5000 series CPUs, you definitely see faster frame rates in games than I'm going to show you. What we are looking for, however, is the comparison. The 3080 versus the 3070 overclocked versus the 3070 base. I think the scaling is going to pretty much hold up no matter what CPU you are using, especially if you're gaming at 4K, which is what all of our testing was done in. Before we get into actual performance numbers, let's talk power, thermals, and noise, because these are three very important issues that a lot of people take into account when making this kind of decision. Now, Zotac isn't necessarily known for the quietness of their fans the way maybe Asus or EVGA are. However, this card is the exception to that rule. I could not hear this card at all with the stock fan curve in place when the card was in my system with the side panel on. It was completely silent. When we overclocked, I did bump the fan curve up to 75% and I was able to hear it a little bit. However, it is not a problem at all and I think whatever Zotac has done to this generation of their cooler is actually really helpful because the card is very quiet. Perhaps one of the down Downfalls of having a cooling solution that doesn't produce a whole lot of noise is maybe you should have set the fan curve a little bit more aggressively because the temperatures on the twin edge card at stock were not great. You can see here, this is one of our benchmarking runs and the GPU is sitting between 82 and 85 C the entire time and drawing between 205 and 215 Watts. This meant that the boost clock was sitting around 1800, maybe a little bit higher than that sometimes, but I can tell you that the longer I ran this test, it actually came down below 1800 and was sitting around 1755. So boost clocks generally will suffer when the temperatures maintain above 80 degrees. And this was the case here. When I dialed in a manual overclock and increased the fan speeds to 75%, it didn't make a huge difference as far as acoustics goes, but it made an enormous change as far as thermals. This is another benchmarking run after we've applied our manual overclock of plus 160 megahertz on the core and plus 800 and 25 megahertz on the memory. The GPU was sitting in the mid 70s this time, and you could see what kind of a dramatic difference it made as far as our boost clocks. Yes, power draw was higher, but because the fans were spinning faster, that meant thermally we were in a much better place. Now let's talk real world performance numbers. I only ran five different benchmarks for this particular review, which is far, far fewer than I normally do on your typical GPU review. However, I just wanted to get an idea of the relative performance versus is the RTX 3080, which has proven itself to be an absolutely outstanding card. The RTX 3070 is supposed to be positioned against the RTX 2080 Ti and, of course, against the upcoming RX 6800 from AMD. So our testing suite includes some very familiar titles if you've watched videos before on my channel. We used Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry, New Dawn, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I also threw in some some quote unquote live gameplay footage of Metro Exodus, because I think that that title really exemplifies what a card like this can do, especially when you have DXR features enabled. So we had ray tracing on ultra and DLSS on, and I was able to maintain a frame rate of 60 FPS or above while playing through this game. Not the can benchmark, the actual gameplay itself. So for $500 in this case, if you can get a card that allows you to enable ray tracing features on Ultra and play at 4K, I think that is a pretty big deal because even the RTX 2080 Ti with its more memory, but first generation RT cores could not really handle that kind of a task. So here are a couple of quick slides of the five benchmarking tests that we did aside from Metro Exodus and we'll come back and we'll wrap up.
So ultimately, all these review videos always come down to, should you buy this card? Should you not buy this card? Should you wait for something else? Should you consider a different brand, etc.? A lot of that is really a personal decision, but the biggest issue facing the RTX 3070 right now is actually not coming until next month. On November 18th, we're gonna see Radeon release two new graphics cards, the RX 6800 and the 6800 XT. Now the RTX 3070 is gonna have two big advantages over the RX 6800 at its launch. Number one, this will have been available for several weeks prior and will hopefully be in at least some consumers hands at that time number two is price this is a 500 dollars graphics card is the rx 6800 going to be able to provide enough value to make it so that consumers will consider it for 80 dollars more if the performance is comparable to this I don't know if it's really gonna sway people that it's an AMD card versus an Nvidia card. Right now, people are kind of anti-NVIDIA just because of the entire Ampere launch, and they are kind of thirsting for something that is different. However, if you think about it logically, does it really make sense to spend 80 more dollars on something that's gonna give you similar performance? On the other side of the coin, the RX 6800 has more memory. That is extremely important, especially when the eight gigs of GDDR6 in this honestly looks a little bit small. It's kind of a weird thing to say right now because even like a year ago, I wouldn't have even considered eight gigs to be a problem in any way. However, with the release of the RTX 3080 and gaming at high fidelity becoming a reality, 4K games, high fidelity texture packs, and other factors have really pushed the boundaries of our VRAM in our graphics cards. And eight gigs right now is almost kind of the minimum that you can recommend. While the 6800 comes with 16 gigs of GDDR6, which is going to be a huge advantage. So the entire premise of this video was can AMD catch up to Nvidia and the RTX 3070? We don't quite know just yet, but assuming that performance is equivalent, they are kind of starting at a deficit because of the price. However, AMD right now is kind of riding a wave and also people are kind of mad at Nvidia but it ultimately does come down to a consumer decision. What do you guys think? Is AMD going to be able to catch up to Nvidia and their 3070 launch? Are they going to surpass the performance of this card? And do you think the $80 price difference is actually going to make people look the other way? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. And as always guys, ugh, ugh. and as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.